Hey guys, Matt here with Mobile Solar Consulting based in Jupiter, Florida. Today I want to show you how we build our power systems. Specifically, our process when we're mounting equipment to a backer board, which is then screwed directly into the vehicle's framing or into existing cabinetry. This is pretty common when an RV or a van comes in already built out to some extent and it has an existing compartment. So we're just putting equipment in there and not building cabinetry of our own. In this case, we use King Backer, which is HDPE. So we use this because it's non-flammable, non-conductive, it's readily available, you can buy it at Home Depot, and it's really easy to work with. Most commonly, I'll use aluminum extrusions when I'm mounting these boards. I'll mount them to the aluminum extru extrusion and then I'll mount the extrusion to the wall, whether it's a home or even a vehicle, this is what I prefer to use. And then you're gonna have a hardware, something like this, where you'd uh, simply slide it in or even roll it in and then turn the nut to tighten that hardware. This way, it makes it very easy for us to secure the backer boards onto the rails. Simply put the board up to the rail and then spin and it's gonna catch and be un unable to come out of the rail. Another advantage of working with this marine backer board is that because it's plastic, it is non-flammable. So other surfaces such as wood, um, bamboo, they may catch fire if your components were to fail, overheat, short circuit, etc. Whereas this is simply going to melt if it gets hot enough. I use a rubber edging material with a metal interior that doesn't look as nice when you cut 45 degree corners, so I prefer to just round the edges out. All right, now let's try to put the rubber on. I usually use a rubber mallet as well. So I just routed the Touch GX wires behind the wall through to the servo. Normally I will route all wires behind the board and tidy them on the back with zip ties so that all extra wires are hidden away from the customer. But in this case, uh, the wiring for the charge controllers, the power wiring and communications wiring, we're going to leave on the face of the board and tidy up with zip tie bases like these uh, because this is an educational tool in this case and not going to a customer's vehicle. So on wires that are going into a screw terminal, we are going to be using ferrules. Ferrules turn a stranded wire into a solid connection. This helps keep any stray strands from you know, flying away and shorting to a different terminal or arcing etc. On connections going to a post, we're going to be using heat shrinkable connections. So this is going to be crimped onto a wire after it's stripped and then heat shrunk with a heat gun. So that makes sure you don't have any moisture getting in there. Um, if you're especially in a marine environment or a camper van, that's really important. I always start with these bolts at a 90 degree angle fit them into the channel and you simply twist to tighten. It's 
So this allows me or to one of my customers that I've shipped the unit to, to install this alone because it's so easy to mount. Even this pretty heavy unit, I was able to mount without much difficulty and secure into the rail. So obviously for a mobile scenario, we'd use nylock nuts and uh, actually torque these down, but for now I'm good just leaving it by hand. So to wrap up, I'm Matt here with Mobile Solar Consulting, and this is how we build power systems. We use a non-flammable backer. It's able to be modified with standard woodworking tools, so you could build one at home the same way. We also make it easy to mount, so we can ship it to you, and you can install it yourself on your own aluminum extrusions and 8020 hardware. Thanks for joining us today.